Hi, I'm Andy Kerr. I'm Head of Regeneration at City of York Council um, and I'm here today uh, to explain the Castle Gateway Master Plan and how we're taking the next steps through to planning permissions uh, to transform Castle Car Park into a major new public realm and event space for the city. So I'm just going to share a presentation uh, just to give a slight overview of uh, the Castle Gateway Master Plan uh, and a brief update on where we've got to. So uh, the Castle Gateway um, is a major regeneration site um, in the city of York. Uh, it covers uh, a big area of the city centre, encompassing many of our heritage assets, our tourist attractions, um, and uh, extends down from the main shopping street down to the confluence of the two rivers. Um, so a real area of opportunity to better celebrate our heritage assets, which currently are very much surrounded by uh, surface level car parking and the whole area is carved in two by the inner ring road, which was put in place in the 60s as, as cities were adapting to uh, motor cars. So in 2016, um, after decades of failed schemes, which have been very commercially led schemes um, and were inappropriate for the area and failed at various points um, due to planning requirements or commercial requirements, um, the council decided that they needed to take the lead and drive this project forward. And we developed a master plan uh, for the area, working with the architects BDP and very much with the public, helping shape the ideas through the My Castle Gateway public engagement approach. Um, the master plan itself um, was approved by the executive in 2018 and we're now at the point of starting to deliver the first phase of the master plan um, and shape the latter phases which will really start to deliver world-class public realm um, and spaces for the city's residents um, and for events to take place and really celebrate the setting of our heritage assets. So the heart of the master plan is that very much that to close Castle Car Park and replace it with new world-class public realm. Uh, this is a very early sketch, which was part of the master plan proposals. And we're now at a point where we are preparing the final designs to take through to a planning application in the summer of this year. Um, the, the space will have, um, again, it'll be a, a public space for the city, but it will also have the ability to host events there at different times through the year. And we're also working with partners such as English Heritage to create um, a visitor, uh, improve visitor experience for Clifford's Tower and to safeguard the future of the building um, through uh, renovations which are ongoing now in spring 2021 and working with the museum who are looking to expand uh, and improve their visitor facilities uh, to safeguard the future of the Castle Museum. So the planning application is due to be submitted this summer um, and the idea is to have a shovel ready project which will enable us to secure hopefully central government funding uh, to take this project forward. Um, as we move into 2022 and beyond. So the master plan itself um, had a strategy in place to deal with car parking provision. Uh, again, the area very dominated by car parking. Um, and um, the master plan objectives were that we had to replace some of that car parking. Very important city centre businesses were clear they only support the master plan with some form of replacement car parking. Um, and also it does generate significant revenues for the council, which helps to pay for public services. So the current strategy is to consolidate two surface level car parks into a single efficient multi-storey car park um, outside the inner ring road. So moving those car journeys with outside the inner ring road. And that will then allow the closure of Castle Car Park to create this new world-class public realm. It reduces car parking in the area by around 130 spaces from, from where we currently are. And the access at the first floor level into the car park means that we can build on a floodplain, which doesn't have any alternative development uses and creates a new cycle route through the space and a crossing point over the inner ring ro road. However, we have paused um, the proceeding with the multi-storey car park at this stage to undertake a strategic review of city centre car parking to reassure ourselves that this is the right parking solution. We do need replacement car parking to close Castle Car Park and to be able to create that public realm, but we want to be absolutely sure that this is the right solution. And the decision will be taken in October this year, informed by that strategic review, which is due to complete in September. And then the other element uh, which we have, have been proceeding with is uh, the Castle Mill site. And 
Uh, this contains many of the key benefits of the master plan, certainly in the first phase, particularly around active transport and encouraging cycling and walking and pedestrians through the area and also opening up the rear of the Castle Museum, which is currently a public park, which is behind um, a pay wall. You can only get in there if you are accessing the museum. This will become a new public park open 24 seven and we'll have a cycle path which crosses over the inner ring road, takes people over a new pedestrian cycle bridge and up Piccadilly. The site will also provide 106 apartments, including new council housing, over ground floor commercial spaces that will help to animate Piccadilly and create a new city living neighborhood. And then the sale of those apartments is key to the delivery of the wider master plan because the profit from the sale of the apartments is what helps to pay for those wider public benefits and mean that we've got a viable master plan solution. We've uh, appointed a contractor to work up the detailed design uh, of this site. Uh, we've appointed weights in the last month and they will now be producing that detailed design and providing a tender price for the construction element and a decision will be taken by the council's executive in October to proceed with the construction based on that tender price. So that's a summary of uh, the master plan and where we are. And um, we'll have later conversations moving on to how the designs are emerging for Castle and the Eye of York for the planning application that we're going to submit in the summer of this year. Hi, I'm Mandy Kerr, I'm Head of Regeneration at City of York Council, and I'm in charge of uh, the delivery of the Castle Gateway Master Plan Project. I've got Matthew Costa with me from BDP. He's our landscape architect who's helping us to design up the new world-class public realm that we're looking and seeking to create uh, to replace Castle Car Park and um, the Eye of York area of the city. Um, so myself and Matthew uh, are going to talk through some of the designs for the space and how they're emerging. Um, the emerging ideas that we show you are very much a snapshot in time. So where in some places they might look very worked up, it really is just starting to translate some of the ideas that we've got into what they actually look like and to be able to test those with the public and with our key stakeholders as we look to continually refine these designs and evolve the design as we move forward to submitting a planning application in the summer of this year. The key uh, driver of that is to get a, a scheme that is in place, which will give us the best opportunity of securing external funding by having a shovel ready project, which is ready to go as part of the wider delivery of the Castle Gateway Master Plan. So the proposals um, that Matthew is going to talk you through, um, again, they are that this moment in time, uh, we're continuing to be refined, uh, but they are very much based on the open brief for the area, which has been developed through extensive public engagement through the My Castle Gateway project and start to draw out some of those key asks that the public wanted to see for the area. So looking at how we interact better with the River Foss, how we introduce play into the space and, and the real notion of in, attracting families to the area. Can we use water fountains and elements like that that allow children to play and are attracted to the space at, at different times of the year? Um, people also said very much they want to be able to eat in this space, to be able to bring their own food and have spaces they can eat, but also potentially be able to buy a coffee or a sandwich and look at being able to just uh, enjoy our heritage that sits around this area, understand the history of the area, uh, the history of the castle and, and its long, long history through Roman Viking times and all the different stories and narratives that sit within that. But also the ability to reflect on the past and some of the darker elements of the history of the site. And um, uh, but then at other times of year, also attend events um, and gather in the space and really bring the space to life um, and allow it to be a key part of our city centre and our cultural offerings of the city centre allied to the major tourist attractions that we have in the area and cultural attractions which are enjoyed by our residents. So that's the open brief which we've responded to. Uh, again, the plans that we're about to share, you very much respond to that open brief uh, and start to unpick those and start to look at what they could actually look at look like. So I will pass over to Matthew, who's going to share the plans. And both myself and Matthew will talk uh, around the plans and the different areas and what the different elements we're trying to create are. Matthew. Thank you. Um, I'll just share, share the presentation. Um, so yeah, so like like Andy says, you know, this is this is very much sort of um, early days, and we're going through the process of optioneering. But this is you know giving a flavour of sort of the direction that we're going in. I mean, you know, what what, what th this site is is one of the most you know historically prominent spaces in the country, and certainly you know it's probably one of the most under celebrated 
historical places in the country through virtue of there being a car park. Um, but one thing that, that that's come through in terms of the open brief that Andy has, has spoken about is it stop, sort of sets up a, an approach to sort of what people want to see in the space, you know, as a as a sort of modern reinterpretation of a of a place in York that responds to York as being a, you know a modern city that's is rich in heritage, um, and I think that's that that's really important because it sort of sets us on a on a sort of uh, on a sort of guidance. But it's the it's the heritage and it's the setting and it's the you know it's the the sort of uh, significance of the site that really builds a structure that sort of ties all those things together. And so the diagrams that you kind of see here are um, a culmination of a lot of a lot of background work. But essentially, what 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 it does is it uses the sort of heritage aspects of the of the site to sort of build a structure and allow us to sort of position where uses and, and things that people have said in the open brief to be positioned so that they're not sort of insensitively located. So, I mean, in terms of the site itself, you get this you get this informal and, and sort of formal split through virtue of those historical this, those historical structures. You know, the way that the setting of Clifford's Tower, the sensitivities around, you know, some of the spaces within the site, you know, such as, you know, the 1190 massacre or the, the drop at the end of the, the museum building, the formal composition of the area that's known as the Eye of York, um, and, and the sort of the simple composition of those Georgian buildings. So they, you know, they all sort of set a sort of formality and deserve a sort of sense of respect that sort of sets out a character. Whereas, you know, we have the river's edge uh, and, and, you know, the, the links to some of the sites, you know, around this area, such as the forthcoming Castle Mills site, um, which allow us to be slightly more playful, slightly more informal with some of the landscape characters, you know, and, 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 and simply speaking, you know, we have areas which we need to buffer and hide. We have servicing, we have things within the site that need to be maintained and carry on. So, so the, the, that sort of builds a sort of structure that you can sort of see in this diagram. So in terms of the sort of uses that you can kind of see, one of the one of the key moves that we're trying to do is create this sort of approach and sort of see it as the museum approach. But it, it, its intention is to sort of reflect the former castle approach um, that, that, that once people accessed in the Eye of York area. Um, and so that places quite a lot of significance and prominence on the on the castle uh, ca the, the sort of linking with Castlegate and that sort of arrival coming through into the site and connecting with the historic core, which today, you know, it feels quite disjointed. And certainly when you get around Tower Street, it feels very sort of vehicle dominated and less orientated towards pedestrian and cycle movement. There's also, you know, the setting of Clifford's Tower and we want to push out and sort of complete the green edge around Clifford's Tower to sort of give it that sense of grounding and sort of give it the significance that it, 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 it sort of demands. Um, the sort of you know reflective spaces that we're starting to pull in, and you know whether it's in the the end of the the, the, the castle museum building, or whether it's you know something around the mock that talks about reflection about some of the past events, and we'll sort of go into a bit more detail in that later on. The sort of the key opportunity space, quite obviously, is the the, the car park area, and that that actually acts as the sort of transitional zone between that sort of informal and formal character, and that's where we're we'll sort of be looking at bringing things in, maybe water, you know, maybe using it as an event space. So that's really sort of a large sort of flexible area. And then as you sort of start to go into further into the site and into the sort of the, the, the area that's known as the, the Eye of York, you have this sort of interesting dynamic where you've got you know, the museum and what the museum needs is sort of an arrival sequence and arrival approach. And then also you've got a fully functional court there that needs to work, you know, nine to five with all the sort of workings that a, a Crown Court requires. So the space in this instance needs to be you know, simple, uh, you know, it needs, to, it, it needs to sort of match the sort of simplicity and the sort of symmetry of those the set piece buildings, but equally there's some real, real contrast in terms of the way that the uses work. So this is sort of an initial sketch, which um, sort of gives an idea of our, our approach and sort of starts to set out um, some of the key lines and some of the key moves that we've spoken about in the in the sort of uses diagram that you've seen before and essentially you know it's the idea of enhancing that sort of route that comes through from Castlegate it's creating an event space that feels like it's purposeful and sort of grounded and, 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 and positioned in a sort of logical way so that it's not sort of ad hoc 
Um, it's starting to look at sort of more reflective spaces. And again, it's starting to build in the idea of play and playful landscapes and tying that with ecology and sort of the, the sort of ecological benefits that a modern sort of landscape should have. So I suppose where we are at the moment is we've got a lot of questions and this, this, this uh, diagram and the following diagram sort of pose ideas, but equally there's questions that we are start trying to answer and trying to resolve, but we obviously want to go through the process to get the, the sort of the, the options out there and the right discussions. Uh, you know, and there, and there are things about you know, actually, you know, how does how how can we provide access around the base of the base of the the, the castle? You know, how should that function? How should we look at trees with positions of sort of key views and sort of framing spaces? How the sort of the language of this sort of informal to formal sort of uh, character works through the site and starts to frame an event space? How we use the aspects of uh, of the site to the benefit, creating sort of subtly aspects, seating spaces, but also shaded aspects, and how we sort of start to explore options with the Eye of York space, you know, how do we put in things like curation in there that can tie with, you know, the, the workings that go on with Clifford's Tower, or with the Castle Museum, or with the site as a whole, sort of pull out the significance of it, and degrees of sort of hard and soft, and what we do, I think, are quite key in sort of how we define that sort of character. So this is the sort of the plan where we are at the moment, um, and again, this this may look quite resolved, but you know it's not. And we're sort of going to go through this in a bit more detail uh, later on. But all the aspects that we've kind of spoken on previously, you can hopefully hopefully see in terms of what those key moves are. And you know, this is based on a lot of analysis that has come through from from our you know, months of work that we've been going through on this, um, and, and, and referring to some of the key themes. That, that you know come from the open brief and that Andy has been talking about previously, um, and so we'll just go now through the different areas just to discuss all those different aspects. I think Matthew, yeah, just to just to reiterate that point that this is that very much that snapshot that snapshot in time of the point we've got to in the design process continuing to now evolve that refine that and really to get the view on particularly some of those areas like the eye of york what what level of change do, do the public want to see in the eye of york um and how, how do we start to to look to respond to the brief for that area um, but this this just helps us it helps us to shape that it helps to translate the the ambitions for the area into something which we can test with people and then continue to refine I think, like Matthew says, he's going to talk you through the different elements of those different bits. So I think some really exciting ideas emerging here. Um, and we think um, some great opportunities for this space that have started to break it down into really usable parts uh, that join together in one coherent whole. So, I mean, following on from that, so the first area that we're going to zoom in is the area around the tower. Um, and we've been working with uh, you know, with English heritage, we've been working with um, York liberal Jewish community to pull through a sort of an approach or starting to work through approaches for how we might improve the connectivity to the base of the MOT, how this might function as not only access that solves sort of some of the connectivity issues around the site and access to the MOT, but also the way in which we can create a space for reflection, a way in which we can create a space where the people can actually get away from the sort of noise that might be going on elsewhere in the site and how we can make this character sort of visibly a different sort of character to elsewhere within the site. So we've been looking at options um, as to access you know, around, around the base of the MOT and how people can kind of walk through this space and use this space and appreciate history in a, in a quiet sort of different sort of way. And then there's also the interface that we've been talking about with the sort of castle approach. And one of the key things that I think the Open Brief talks about is you know, connectivity with the water and how we bring that in. And I'll sort of touch on how we've, we're trying to do that later on. But one of the things that we really want to do is, is show that there is a connection between, you know, the river and Clifford's Tower and how that might work, not only in terms of, you know, giving some, some sort of significance to that, but also how it can work as a, as a form of guidance to draw people through to and around the space. Um, in a sort of in in a, in a way that is playful, in a way that is reflective, you know, in a, in a way that doesn't jar with perhaps some of the more sensitive going sort of sensitive uses that could be happening around the base of the mot. So again, ideas to be explored, but certainly 
the, the, the detail and working with artists and things like that are things that we really want to explore to really sort of enrich that edge. The event space, um, you know, there is a, you know, there, there's, a, there's a drive to create a space for York that can hold events, um, a space that's flexible, a space that's usable, um, but equally we, we wanted to make sure that that space, um, when an event's not on, doesn't feel odd or, or doesn't feel like it's missing it missing a part. So we are, you know, using this as a, a kind of flexible hard space, but we want to really sort of enrich this area with, you know, sort of the histories, the textures, the way in which we design the paving to pull out a lot of the stories and of the significances of this site. And again, creating those sort of different, different sort of character zones and different sort of contemplation areas, be it sort of areas that's, that sort of buffer the sort of turning head that we've got here, that might have a more southerly aspect, or creating, you know, a sort of garden, more reflective, softer sort of space near the drop uh, and how those two areas sort of frame a central space that may have an event may not have an event but again how that sort of fits in quite nicely with all of these pieces and one of the most important things as well as we want to make sure is that there's lots of seating and the seating that you know you don't require money to, to sort of sit there when there's an event on actually it's flexible enough that that seating is integrated around this event space so that if there is an event going on, people feel comfortable sitting in this space and using this space. And they don't have to, you know, they don't have to feel pressured to, to sort of commercially contribute. And actually it is a space for all people. So, you know, the way in which the, the sort of river edge sort of acts as a, a linear seating, the way in which you can work as an amphitheater when events are going on or performances, or even if it's just a place to view and look over the space and look towards Clifford's Tower. So all of these edges, and I think edges is quite an important thing about this scheme all the sort of edges work in a different way, but they all sort of contribute to the sort of central space being allowed to be more free and open. I think two, two points just to add to that, the clear brief we've given uh, Matthew and BDP is that what we want is an amazing uh, public space which works for events. Um, we want it to be a space that works absolutely when events aren't taking place, it is an amazing public space. Um, and the other point, again, is making sure that any event space we create has got all the infrastructure needed to allow things just to be able to pop up into that space without the need for a lot of the things that make events often prohibitively expensive. So things like having to provide electrical generators, all those things often stop the smaller scale community events that could also take place in this space. So how do we create a space that works? Does work for some of our bigger events, the Rose Theatre, for example, that was a couple of years ago, that kind of scale event, but also for smaller community based events and making sure that they're viable to go ahead by providing all the necessarily elements of servicing uh, in place for them to be able to just pop up and take place over a short period of time. You know, I think just following on from what Andy was saying there, you know, broadly speaking, we've been looking at the sort of parameters in terms of area that those events could fit into, but just making sure that we're leaving, you know, sort of generous enough space to respect the setting of some of those buildings and some of those edges and spaces. So, you know, making sure that we have you know, 20 meters, 20 meters from the river edge so that we can create a sort of green linear sort of park along the edge, making sure that the drop has another 20 meters, making sure that, you know, we have a good 10 meters for a prominent sort of access museum castle approach. So making sure that that event space is considered and sits within the site, but doesn't dominate it. And we still have, you know, those key sort of pieces of the design uh, intact, even when an event's in there. And again, just some diagrams of the sort of things that can fit in there. So, you know, we need, we sort of working with C, CYC to sort of, um, to, to understand what events are going on in there and how those events might sit. Um, but this is just an example slides showing you how you can take a notional area and put in a market, for example. And then I think this is just the final point about the flexibility of this site and how we're looking at options and, you know, the, the, the moment the main plan sort of illustrates this as a as a hard space, but you know options are still open for lots of things, be it sort of water features and fountains, be it sort of a greener landscape. So we're we're looking at options at the moment, and again, you know, that's the process that we're going on. So whilst the, the main plan is sort of harder, this is just sort of illustrating that we're going through that process now. 
Yeah, I, th I think just picking up on that point, a, a key theme that came through the open brief was this notion of play and the ability to sort of play within water-based environments uh, to be able to attract families and children to be running in and out of these kind of water features. I think one of the key things that we're seeking to look at is how, how do we do that? Is it a sort of a fountain-based scenario um, that, that's been used elsewhere, like the Peace Gardens in Sheffield or, or the new public square at King's Cross? Or do we have something which is more natural within the, the sort of river edge landscaping that we're trying to create, which still has that ability for play within it, but maybe is less formalised than, than sort of fountains that are taking place? Um, so those are points that we, we really want feedback from the public. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I think that's a good point to go on to the sort of river edge piece. And this is where it can, the landscape can be a bit more playful and a bit more relaxed. Um, and, and so one of the things that we're going to try and uh, talk about is the challenges that we faced along this river edge. Um, but equally, you know, the, the, the design challenge, I suppose, is how do you bring in the river? How do you bring that river character in and feel like you have access to the river? This is sort of going back to the idea of that formal and informal and just showing that sort of the different way in which the planting character might work with that informal and informal character. So the space along the river edge will have a much more sort of um, prairie, more sort of relaxed, fluid sort of planting palette that sort of gives that sense of informality, whereas we get more structured uh, and sort of more clipped forms as we get to the, the more formal areas such as the Isle of York. I suppose about the, about the river edge. I mean, we've we've explored options, uh, and one of the things the Open Brief talks about is is access to the river. Um, and I suppose one of the biggest challenges that we have along this river edge is the fact that there is a you know the old Georgian prison foundations that sit there, which are con considerable sort of um, considerable sort of stone blocks that line the edge of the site, and they're historically significant. So they were sort of a quite quite a strong design challenge, and the physical access of getting to the river. You know, at the moment the Castle Mills site that sits is you know, proposed just just south of the site is going to provide access to the river, uh, and so we kind of felt that that because of the significance of this edge that we were going to keep that intact. And so actually the design challenge came is that well how do we make people feel like they have access to the river in this area? Um, whilst that you know physically we're not terracing down to the water's edge, so actually what we wanted to do was use the castle wall or use the old prison wall as an opportunity rather than a constraint, and use that to sort of influence the design, and use that to influence the way in which we might sort of thread through the idea of having a playful landscape. So we're caught, you know we're sort of developing these ideas at the moment, but one thing that we quite liked is the idea that sort of nature is reclaiming history in a sense. And so, you know, using that sort of um, that sort of quite rigid sort of uh, stone block wall as a reference, we wanted to create a series of sort of playful sort of stepping landscape stones that sort of sit in a, a more natural sort of landscape um, to create that idea of a play. And that we might, you know, suggest that these are the, you know, the old blocks from the prison wall that have sort of fallen down. We might enrich that with graffiti or text or things that give people pause for thought that sort of show that actually there's some there's some heritage here there's some history this is quite interesting so we're trying to you know interpret history in a playful way and making sure that it's not insensitive with the way that the site works and there's lots of elements that we want to thread in there you know not only the idea of these playful stepping stones but also you know, the idea of ecology and biodiversity that are very important with, you know with, with cities today i think um, and also bringing water in and play and, and using water in that way, because again, like we were talking about with the main space, um, you know, water is a playful thing and, and you know, children and kids really like spending time and playing in water. So we wanted to thread and mix those two together along this sort of linear path on the river edge. This is just a section that shows how that might work. So you can kind of see that the, the, the sort of prison walls are actually quite substantial. They're about a metre and a half, metre and a half thick um, in terms of their width, so that they're, they're, they're very substantial sort of things. But what we wanted to make sure is that we created, you know, a new riverside walkway that allowed people to have access along the river's edge, connecting to Castle Mills, you know, round through to Piccadilly, um, and then also making sure that we had a, a sizable sort of green sort of park area that had this playful landscape, water, natural planting that sort of threads through. 
And again, when we were talking about before with the event space, that's going to be framed by some sort of edge, some sort of seating, seating that can interact with the sort of event space. That sort of walkway ties into the area around the back of the Castle Museum. And one of the things that we want to do is you know, connect the Castle Mills site and development of Castle Mills to this site. Um, and one of the things that we think is quite a great opportunity is the fact that ecologically speaking, it's actually quite it's actually quite rich around there. And so what we want to do is we want to try and create a walkway and a boardwalk that doesn't impact that ecology, um, impacts that ecology only minimally. So we'll be looking at sort of engineered solutions that don't disturb the land, don't disturb the sort of the, 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 the tree planting as much as we can. Um, and we sort of use lighting and things like that to create a safe sort of ecological walkway around the back of the, the, the sort of museum building. I think we've um, we've always known that's a, a really challenging space. It's a very tight area, and what we want to do is 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 really sort of draw on that and the dominance of the female prison building to one side and and the, the planting that sits in that to create that much more informal route through um, using the boardwalk so that we're not creating expensive terracing, uh, which could be prohibitively expensive and difficult, uh, but working with the natural environment. I think we've always known the challenges through there would mean that it would be a, a pedestrian route only through that space. And that's why we focus the cycling routes, uh, the new cycling routes we'll be creating at Castle Mills with the pedestrian cycle bridge over the Foss and up Piccadilly. And then this route would be that much more informal route through into the new uh, Riverside walk space and the event space and, and public realm that's created beyond. And there's a lot of challenges associated with that as well. You know, we need to make this area safe. So working with lighting colleagues to make sure it's safe. Um, so, you know, there's lots of challenges, but we think, you know, we think we can come through with quite a unique solution that could be, you know, a real sort of different sort of space for your, or a different sort of, you know, sort of series of, series of spaces as you link from one space to another, which would be really good. Um, I suppose the, 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 the sort of the, the last key space, I mean, we've got two areas to talk about, which is the Eye of York and, and, um, and Tower Street. But first of all, is the Eye of York, I mean, there's options that we're showing here, and I think the, the sort of the, the design process is, is is still ongoing with this, and we still have some some way to go. I mean, today you know, existing, we have that sort of central um, central sort of oval uh, sort of lawn space with the, the tree that's positioned in the middle there, um, and then we have vehicular access that that, that goes round that, that obviously provides access for parking for the for the court and for the, um, the the sort of vans that go there and service the crown court so today you know we have that sort of layout um, but one of the things that we want to do and one of the key things that we want to do with this space is to reinforce that connection going through here and reinforce the connection going round so we really want to look at how we can create that sort of more pedestrian more sort of a pedestrian friendly sort of environment that, that more sort of shared space environment within this area so really what we want to do is sort of detune the sort of roadways that we've got here and then there's sort of the question about what degree do we go in terms of paved and soft space and how does that work you know what what do what do we do with the edges what do we do with the tree in the middle what do we do with the sort of the, the, the pavements and I think at the moment we're Kind of testing options that go from more paved versions to more sort of planted options, and the, the sort of the, the layout that we've got at the moment, it, it, it's, it verges on the sort of the more green side. We have a more sort of more playful character on one side where we have where we have the museum, and we look to sort of integrate parking and integrate sort of the facilities that the court requires on the other side. But it still has that that element of element of symmetry. And it still has that sort of uh, element of formality to it, which is obviously the Ivy York sort of um, the, the sort of demands. Um, but but really, I suppose at the moment this space is 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 the options are open. And we're still developing ideas here. So and again, it's another it's another point to really debate and talk through. Yeah, definitely. I think it's the, it's the really interesting one in that um, obviously the the it's how we view things and for a long time that is what the the eye of york has looked like um in terms of people's perception of that space i mean for our generation that's what it's always looked like but it hasn't always looked like that it's been a much more formal square space in the past uh, the actual tree uh, that's in there is, has only been in uh, really since the 1980s and that period so um yeah that's that's how i guess our generations understood the space the question that we will want to tease out from the public is 
is it, does that space actually work for them now? What's the appetite for change? And, and there is a whole range of actually leaving that space quite untouched through to big changes that we could make and, and where should we arrive at that point but I think the notion that this space could really act as more of a cultural uh, setting for the area an open space museum maybe a space that could be curated at different times of the year with maybe visiting artwork um, is, is exciting um, but similarly uh, people people may um, have a very strong view of, of again that snapshot in history which it has been for this recent period and, and an area that we should should look to remain the same so those will be the things we'll be trying to tease out in the public engagement I think that's uh, I'd missed out that bit actually Andy I think one of the one of the key things that we wanted to pull out from the original diagram is that idea of curation and how that curation can can factor into this space and how it can work with the museum and how we can work with that sort of idea of a, being a museum approach or how it can work with sort of the, the, you know, the significance of the site and how it works with the, with the Clifford's Tower and the Eye of Yorker or the area known as the Eye of Yorker kind of in, you know, intrinsically linked and how those two spaces can really work with each other. So there was that big thing about curation that we wanted to sort of pull through here. And then the other thing I wanted to say about the central tree is that it, it's quite, a, it's quite a, from a design perspective, it's quite a dominant thing. Um, and so, you know, that, that, that tree really does dictate a space to a certain degree. So it's worth considering that about how it sits and how it functions with those existing buildings. Uh, and the final, the final area is sort of Tower Street. And I suppose this diagram that you see here is, is showing what we're, what we're, uh, where we're looking to really sort of push the sort of vehicular controls, I guess, and how we're trying to minimize vehicles coming into the sort of access point where you come in from Castlegate. So, you know, one of the key drivers for this scheme is to obviously, you know, rebalance the space away from, you know, away from sort of vehicular dominance. I mean, I don't think you could get a site today that's more vehicular dominant. Um, and so we're really trying to promote that, but there's obviously logistical challenges that we need to be mindful of about how sort of the city functions and how servicing works and all those things that tie into that. So at the moment, you know, the, the, the sort of the driver is that we want to make sure that the connection with Castlegate is controlled and the vehicle access there is, is minimised as best we can. So what that means is that we, we sort of notionally start to look at secure lines, you know, at that sort of knuckle to allow that to happen and that we need to integrate sort of you know, turning facilities and road access through, you know, up until that point. Um, I think I think Matthew I think there's there's sort of three simple principles isn't there with this one that we we've still got to retain access to the Coppergate servicing yard because the shops uh, that are within the Coppergate centre have got a legal legal right of access in there to be able to service their shops so we are have, going to have to retain that but what we don't want to do is be um, an area then that vehicles are going for all the time so it would be limited restricted access for vehicles to that point on that Tower Street, uh, we've also got um, blue badge parking on the street there, and we want to retain that blue badge parking um, wherever possible um, and make sure there's that provision there for disabled uh, disabled users. Um, but we've also then got to consider we're creating an event space, and with that, un unfortunately, comes requirements for, for some of our counter-terrorism measures around hostile vehicle attack, things that we're having to deal with in the city centre and we have to put in place and we're looking at permanent solutions in the city centre for that as well. So it's at what point do, uh, so, so how do we keep that road available for blue badge parking? How do we facilitate access to the Coppergate centre and at what's, where's the right point for those hostile vehicle measures to go in place and how can they continue to be accessed uh, through as well with controlled access points. So lots of moving parts in that bit, Matthew, isn't there? Uh, which mean yeah. it, it, it probably will have more, have that retained road feel up to the point where the access is um, and isn't sort of wrapped around the public realm. But obviously it's very important that we're able to allow um, uh, uh, some of our uh, disabled people to be able to park there and access and continue that access that's required for the Coppergate Shopping Centre. So work in progress, isn't it? But those are the key principles, I would say. Yeah, it's, it's work in progress. We're testing options about you know, how much blue badge parking we can actually get in there and we're trying to make it as efficient as possible. And then the character of the street, you know, we're making sure that it's going to be high quality. So whilst we're talking about a street or a road, it will really feel like it's part of a public space. We'll have defined curbs, but the, the, the you know, sort of the carriageway will be treated in a way that makes it feel like it's... Um, you know, it's sort of detuned and makes it feel like it's part of the space.
Um, and then that's 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 largely it. So thank you for listening. Yeah, thank you, Matthew, and thank you for taking the time to talk us through that. Um, obviously, being involved in the process with the design team, uh, the the level of thought that goes into all of those images and 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 the ideas and and how we're balancing the different uh, demands on space how we're telling the history of the site and um, how we're meeting all those public aspirations is sort of a fascinating process to go through um again this is that snapshot in time point this is the bit that we're wanting to test those ideas with the public how we start to get those things right and what we would encourage anybody to do is get involved in the my castle gateway process uh, there are a um, number of events, there's our social media channels, and we want to get as much feedback as we can so we can continue to evolve the proposals and get those planning applications submitted in the summer and then hopefully start to secure the funding that will allow us to transform this space from the car park that it currently is into somewhere that we can all be enjoying at some point in the near future. So thank you.